Yo, what's up, everybody? Happy holidays. It's the Red Beard Podcast, and you're listening to your boy, Cooley. Yeah, that's right. That's me, Cooley. Uh, yo, I got turkey in my stomach and mistletoe in the fucking doorway, homie. So get yours. Listen, this is a great day in the history of the Red Beard Podcast because there's so much shit that dropped. Look, we've got Netflix dropping Punisher. We've got Hulu dropping Runaways. DC gave us the Justice League in theaters, and we're going to talk about what we think about that between me and Tony. And on top of all that, I mean, on top of all that, Marvel gave us the Infinity War trailer, and we're going to talk all about it. So make sure you got your shit and pants on. Podcast is brought to you by these cool dudes. <laughs> Supply and demand investing, where not all investments are created equal. Yo, Tony, what's up? Hey, what's going on, dude? Yo, man, want to play a game of Would You Rather? Yeah, man, let's do it. All right, well, Would You Rather, over the last three years, have invested in Bank of America with an annual dividend payout of 1.77%, or... Would you rather have invested in Citizens Bank with an annual dividend payout of 1.76%? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm going to have to think about it. But you know what? To see the results of what we came up with, or if you have two stocks you'd like to see compared, go to supplyanddemandinvesting.com slash redbeard. Supply and Demand Investing is here to offer guidance when it comes to investing. Whether you want to invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or exchange-traded funds, supply and demand investing is here to help. And unlike the buy and hold method of investing of the past, supply and demand investing is comparative to any good sports team. There are good times to play offense by investing your hard-earned money in things like the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, real estate, or international equity. And there are times to play defense by investing in fixed income, higher dividend paying assets like bonds, CDs, or cash. So check out supplyanddemandinvesting.com slash redbeard. And it's live, baby. Yo, we got some interviews coming your way later on, so make sure you stick around for that. Uh, we talked about, you know, how, what we're going to do. We're going to release some of these things week by week. And this week we got Robert Carradine and Larry Scott uh, from Comic-Con 2017. So make sure you uh, stick around after the credits and because if, we got a stinger. And if you guys you. don't know, they are both from Revenge of the Nerds. Um, Who so don't know that? They were awesome uh, interviews and you guys better stick around because they're worth listening to. So check it out. Yeah. And if you don't know, you better ask somebody. Anyway, yeah. we got to my left. Which is irrelevant to you because you're listening to me and not watching me. But anyway, to my left, we got... And me, Esperen. That's right. Hi. <laughs> or Mario. <laughs> it's me, Mario. And you know I'm here. What's going on, guys? Tony, uh, glad to be here uh, on this n this week of episode, whatever the hell I was going to say, of Red Beard Podcast. <laughs> uh, dude, this is going to be an awesome episode. We are missing Jim today. Uh, he couldn't be here with us, but um, we got the trio with us, so we're going to have some The fun. Trinity. Hell yeah. Unlike the Trinity Killer from Dexter. Right. All right. So, let's Although do this it. Trinity is killer. Yeah. <laughs> what? So, yeah, man. What's up? Nothing much, dude. We, Dude, a lot of stuff actually came out um, in the past couple weeks. Um, some amazing stuff. Um, I think the first thing that I just got to ask you guys about, uh, and we're all going to weigh in on this, is the Infinity War trailer dropped, which was insane. So... Every Marvel movie that has been released has been leading up to this trailer. Um, and I think they pretty much like verbally said that in the trailer. Um, so it was um, probably one of the most intense trailers I've ever seen. I'm still trying to digest it all. But um, what did you guys think about it? Ren, what, I mean, what were your thoughts watching it? It's definitely the most exciting release of a Marvel trailer in a long time for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm super pumped. I'm, I've been like, eh, 
with a lot of what they they've done like oh captain america movie whatever oh it's got a sequel whatever like those movies were released fun cool things but i wasn't like psyched on the entire movie itself like i was like that was cool that was cool but it wasn't something where i was like yeah this whole thing i need to rush out and go see it the day of infinity wars is that thing for me yeah like i'm gonna rush out and see this movie that's what I've been hearing, man. I was talking to uh, one of our coworkers today, and he was just our, like Ryan McCarthy. He's been on the podcast before. He was like, this is one movie he's like, I'm going to see on the day it comes out. And I feel like that's been the consensus with a lot of people I've talked to. Like they are like myself and Ryan combined have not seen Thor yet. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to see that on Saturday with, uh, with Jim and Don. But I mean, there are people that still haven't seen that. And Black Panther isn't even out yet. And obviously we see these characters in the infinity war trailer, you know? So it's like everyone that has been in a Marvel movie is in this movie. It's insane. Oh yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, it's crazy, man. This, this means a lot to a lot of people. And I know it means a lot to my boy Cooley over there. So what's going on, dude? What did you think when you saw this? Yo, did you have your shitting pants on? I didn't. (laughs) And it was unfortunate. Um, (laughs) But I'll tell you, man, like a lot of this, uh, this trailer, just kind of reinforced what they released at D23. Um, I did, because I did watch the shitty footage that was released um, mm-hmm. because I had to. We, we all did, right? Yeah, we it was all, leaked. We all, we all watched yeah. it. And, and a lot of this that was in this trailer was kind of recut and, um, you know, polished up and the special effects were, you know, amped up and, and completed um, for everybody to see, which is why they didn't release it to the public in the first place. But... All it was was just like a, an affirmation, uh, a, a basic confirmation that everything that we saw in that, that trailer originally is actually as awesome as it looked. Um, but I was blown away, man. I was blown away by the special effects. I mean, like I was a little iffy about the, the Iron Spider costume when I saw it in the shitty trailer. But in this trailer, it was like, yo, that shit was dope. Mm-hmm. Um, and just seeing the power of Thanos and, and him like, you know, actually fighting the Avengers like grabbing Iron Man and smashing him into the ground. Uh, like he punches Iron Man and just Iron Man just like falls like he's dead weight. Like it's like he just yeah. like knocked him out through the armor, which is sick. Uh, and it was with the hand that had no glove on it. Like I mean, Thanos is the power of Thanos is not understated in this in this trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, but this trailer, what this trailer did for me though, is where we are here on a podcast discussing all kinds of stuff that was released. Justice League is coming up as one of our topics today. And luckily before Justice League, before we discussed Justice League, we got the trailer for Avengers. And all I can say is in, as a prelude to our discussion Mm -hmm. is that this is an example of a trailer, one trailer crushing a fucking whole movie. Uh, Cause to me, this trailer is what DC wishes they were doing Mm -hmm. and they're trying to accomplish, but they're not there because they're not following the exact formula that Marvel laid out. And the reason why we love this shit and the reason why we're all anticipating, uh, you know, Infinity War isn't because of Infinity War. It's because of everything from Iron Man on. It's Um, everything from 2008 on. (laughs) That's basically what it is. It's like nine years in the making is what this movie is. Right, and I mean, like, like this, this trailer, this trailer looks amazing, and I mean, I figure, why not just roll right into our Justice League discussion now, um, right? Like, did you have more that you wanted to say about it? I mean, no. Well, the only thing I was gonna say is, I just from watching this trailer, and um, you know, being like, being loosely familiar with Thanos, just from like a couple of issues that I've read, comic book wise, where I've seen him as a character. I don't know how the hell they expect to actually even beat this guy. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like one of those guys, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, is he actually going to be like a force that you cannot stop? Yeah. Like the Avengers are like, may not be able to take him down. Like, is right. that a possibility, you know? So who knows? Um, but I mean, it's, um, I don't know. Cause they've, they've come up, they've come up against some pretty like hardcore stuff before. Yeah. And this is even more than that times 10. So I don't know how they're going to do it. And the last time they barely did it. So we'll see what happens. You know, I'm sure you guys have a better idea than I do, but um, I'm, I'm pumped to see how this actually pans out. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%, man. I, I think they, uh, they did a fantastic job with everything rolling up to it and then just like putting it all together. Like this is the culmination. This is, the, this is where the pot boils. Right. And we finally get to get the, the finished meal. 
Right, right. You definitely. Know? It's a good way to put it. But yeah, man, Justice League. Um, I mean, I went into this movie with no um, like preconceptions i guess if you want to say expectations or like, thank you made us a better word expectations <laughs> i don't know what that first word was but um yeah i just didn't really have any expectations it was like i went in with just and i wanted to have fun watching this movie and i did i had a lot of fun um i thought all the characters were great um i didn't really have any issues with any of them um my favorite character, hands down, was uh, was Flash. I thought the Flash was awesome. He had me dying uh, in a couple of times just because he's such an awkward kid. And he's so excited to see, like, the Batcave. He's like, oh, my God, what is this? He's like, we're in a cave? He's like, this is a Batcave. Like, he was just like a goofball, you know what I mean? Right, but right, right. he's got this really <clears throat> amazing ability. Um, so there were some moments of humor that I thought were kind of cheesy where it just reminded me of, like, the cheese ball comedy and like Batman forever and Batman and Robin. While I was like, Oh, like be careful. Like with the car, like the comedy it's don't lay it on too thick. Cause it could get really cornball. You know what I mean? And they, they, they walked a fine line with that, mm -hmm. but kept it at a point where I, it was okay. And it didn't like take away from like the actual drama of the movie. It was pretty well balanced. Um, I think, um, I, I mean, I enjoyed the movie. I were there things that I, felt were a little weird at first when I saw them. Yes. But also for me, it was kind of like I had this uh, idea in my head that it's suspension of disbelief and it's a movie. And that's why this was done that way. Um, and I guess one example uh, that I will bring off right. I'll just talk about right off the bat is something that is, is you and I have talked about it in detail. Cooley is, there is one scene specifically where um, Aquaman just shows up out of nowhere. Like they're in this water main or they're in this. They're it's like the Gotham, th the Gotham th tunnel. Thank you. They're in this tunnel, right? And Which runs under the Gotham River just for geography. Or whatever. Exactly. And they realize that the tunnel is about to cave in and the water is about to break in. And they have like zero seconds. And right as it breaks in. Aquaman shows up and is able to actually like hold back the water and give them just enough time to barely get out with their lives. And like, when I saw that, I was like, well, that's kind of random that he just like showed up. But also in my head, I'm like, ah, oh, well, it's a movie. And like, also there was this other thought in my head. I'm like, well, it's Aquaman. Like he like communicates with the water. Like maybe he knew, like he sent something like that was my, that was my way to kind of ex make that acceptable. You know what I mean? And that worked. That was enough for me. It's like, he's Aquaman. It was water. He knew about it, right? Like that. And I was able to kind of live with that where you had a very different view on that. Yeah. And I think that's kind of things like that are the problem that you seem to have with, with not just DC movies, but I guess I would say any movie in general where things happen that you can't necessarily explain. They just happen to happen. And you say that it's, uh, you've quote is lazy writing. Yes. Right. Perfect quote. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if you want to like add to that. I mean, I'm sure you have something I mean, to I, add. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, there's really not much more to say than I don't like lazy writing. I mean, I don't like when people just do things for the sake of doing them and rely on the, the audience having to suspend their belief mm -hmm. uh, for, for even a moment. Like anything that I have to, anything that takes me out of a, out of a, out of an exhilarating moment and makes me think how did they do that or why did they do that or what or in in what way did this person have any you know reason to be there at that time other than to be you know the the way to keep the plot moving um like you gotta you gotta really like to me that's super lazy because you are not thinking when you're writing like it's like that is something that if you put two seconds of thought into mm -hmm. right problem solved all right well then with that being said talk about the scene that you almost walked out on because i the know that very, was a big problem yeah the, the very first scene the first scene yeah um and it, and because i know this is something you were passionate about yeah. and ren like weigh in on this like seriously because i know like i want to know what you think when you hear the other scene went okay there was an issue with it okay yeah. so th this is not what i call lazy writing this is what i call like just straight like 
bullshit. Like you don't like you just don't know the characters. You don't know what you're doing with these characters. But let me paint the picture. Gotham City rooftop window. Crook com- climbs out with a bag. Right, he's got like stuff that he stole, okay. and it's like uh, silverware and, and dishes and stuff like the most random stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah, and Batman is perched, you know, off to the side on a gargoyle, like straight comic book style, staring at this dude. And I'm like, this is dope. Batman lunges off the the gargoyle, tackles the guy. They get in, they scuffle or whatever, and then he's got his like you know batarang with the rope. He wraps this dude up and hangs him off the ledge of the building, right? So he's hanging him off the ledge of the building. The guy's screaming, don't kill me, blah, blah, blah. And he's, what do you want? And Batman's like, your fear, right? Mm-hmm. So apparently fear attracts the, uh, the parademons, which are the minions of um, Steppenwolf, mm-hmm. um, who is the main baddie for the movie. So the parademons, one of the parademons shows up because like, I guess the guy was scared. I don't understand that personally, but we'll, that is one that I'll say, mm-hmm. okay, well, I'll suspend my disbelief. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. right. Uh, but because how many people in Gotham are scared right now? Why are parademons not all over the place, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's right, got to be right. people shitting their pants at, like, you know, watching The Exorcist or Gotham or DC's <laughs> version of The Exorcist somewhere. Why are parademons not just popping up all over the place? Right. But, but, you know, is there not an amusement park in Gotham? Fucking roller coaster ride, Parademons just tearing that shit up. Right, right. But whatever. Anyway, he's he's hanging him off the ledge. Parademon shows up. The uh, they get into a scuffle. Batman throws the the crook into a wall. Okay. Crook falls. Batman's fighting with the Parademon. Parademon gets stuck to a wall and then disappears because he's about to. It's like you know, biting a cyanide pill or whatever. He self destructs. Okay. Right. So then. As soon as that happens, Batman's examining the markings on the wall that were left behind that later we find out are like, you know, mother boxes or whatever, mm-hmm. um, or symbols of mother boxes, because when you self-destruct, your blood leaves patterns of mother boxes. In the... Anyway, again, suspend disbelief. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, here, here comes the crook. Ren, okay. just tell me what you think of this. The crook comes up okay. and he says to Batman, what was that? And Batman goes... It was a scout. And then he goes, you mean like from space? And then Batman's like, yeah. (laughs) And then he's like, well, what do they want? You think they're here because he's dead? You know, Superman. And then it's, and then it's like the whole like Justice League splash screen. It's like, hey, get ready for the Justice League. Right. So like that's, that's how the movie starts. Why the fuck did he get up and go over and talk to Batman? That's what I want to know. Like, I don't understand why he didn't see that as an opportunity to say, you know what? Batman's preoccupied with this scary ass space zombie. I'm fucking out. I'm out. This is my opportunity. I'm gone. That's also like the worst dialogue to have. Like yeah. one, it's dumb that the crook would even go over. Two, it's the worst dialogue. That and you take a I had cool I took some liberties in... with it, but I mean I was really close no, to what it was. But yeah. But, and why would Batman talk to him? Anyway, why would he entertain him with an answer? I, what was that? Shut the fuck up, crook. You're going to jail. I knew it was going to have right. so many problems with this movie, so I didn't go see it. And I've had so many people talk to me about it. And I love DC. I grew up with DC because I'm 28. I grew up with the 1994, you know, Batman animated series. And that was amazing. I mean, it created characters for Batman, like Harley Quinn, who mm-hmm. she's still around. She's one of the biggest DC characters. And... I just knew it was going to be trash. They're trying to do this format now where they try to do like a buddy comedy because they see, you know, Deadpool is really successful. Mm -hmm. And then they see, well, like Thor did it. So, you know, we're going to have more jokes, but it's really cringeworthy. Well, we will get to that. I mean, like I'm going to I just want to point out now before I forget this point. When Batman v Superman came out, Mm -hmm. they uh, saw how that did. And because of the reaction they actually went back and reshot some stuff for Suicide Squad because they thought Suicide Squad was too dark. And they put some comedy into it, and that didn't turn out well either. So cringe Point just to be made, but mm-hmm. going back to your point, too. They're trying to do like a buddy yeah, thing. Yeah, no, that intro sounds terrible. I, I don't know if I would have walked out, but I would have been tapped out. Like, so, I'm just like not taking it seriously. So here's my reaction on that. From like Obviously, I'm familiar with Batman, and I'm familiar with like how he deals with things. When that happened, I was like, 
okay, yeah, like, why didn't the dude run away? I was like, all right, well, maybe he's just, like, scared shitless and, like, is, but also interested in what the hell's going on, right, and tried to figure that out. But then he like knows. Like, he was, like, a, like a, like an alien investigator podcaster that was just like, wow, this is fucking gold for my show. <laughs> no, I can't just, run. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like, somebody that's, like, literally, like, scared shitless to the point where, like, they don't know what to do. Like, should I be, like, what if this thing comes after me? Like, do I want to be near Batman? Like, I don't know. Like, that's kind of what I was like, I'm thinking with. And then also I'm thinking this, like, okay, well, maybe he's just like watching this shit and it all happened like kind of fast. Right. So he obviously knows that Batman didn't want to kill him because he didn't throw him off the ledge or whatever. So then he kills this thing and then he's still standing there. So he like asked him a question. I mean, like that for me was, was was somewhat believable. The only problem I had with that was how he didn't arrest the guy or take him in after that scene was over. And at first I was like, ah, well maybe that guy is not really like Batman's priority right now, but it doesn't matter because Batman's ultimate goal is to rid Gotham city of crime and take down these people. So it doesn't matter if it's not his priority. This guy is going to jail. Right. The fact that like he didn't actually take him out in some way at the end of that scene because he was hanging around was a little hard for me to believe. But I was like, my you know justification was like, it's not a priority right now. Move on to the next scene. And I forgot about it. Like that's kind of like what happened with me there. I write that two ways. If I was writing. Okay. One, the guy doesn't ask Batman a question at all. He just no. fucking gets up and runs. Yeah, there right. should be no dialogue. Totally. Right. Zero Makes dialogue. Sense. Right. Two. He asked Batman, what was that? Batman punches him in the face, knocks him out, and then fucking yeah, wraps him up. Doesn't I was say thinking shit about that. to him. Right? Yeah. Not, it was a scout. Like, he's not he's not privy to that information. That shit is fucking that's Batman information. Right, right. That's like that's you know, like when when even dealing with the Justice League in in the comics anyway, even dealing with the Justice League, he's mad secretive. Like he holds his information close because oh, yeah. knowledge is power. Right. Knowledge mm -hmm. is more powerful than any power that any of those guys have. And he's the guy that has all the knowledge. So he starts giving that away. He starts to become less powerful and less valuable to the team. Mm -hmm. So he's a very secretive person. He keeps everything close to the vest for him to even say anything to this guy, whoever the fuck he is. Right. He's a nobody. He's nobody. Right. He would never say anything. He would not engage in conversation with this dude, period. So for me, that was that was not lazy writing. It was poor writing. Uh, but lazy writing comes later when you just start throwing people into the mix, like because you need them in the scene, like the Aquaman mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Okay. And then there was one other thing that I think you had a problem with. What it wasn't Aquaman, it was the the chase with the arrow that oh, you yeah. brought up. Okay. Yeah. So bring up that and explain that that quickly. And then I have a point I want to ask you guys, but but go ahead. Well, I have, can I can I choose something different besides yeah, that? Yeah, because just something different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah only because on. that that one is. Uh, I, I know there that, was something else that we talked about. That wasn't yeah. it. I just didn't remember what it was. That one is less important to me than this, and I don't want to go too much into this, like back and forth on just Justice League, because I yeah, want to. Yeah. I want to talk about other things with this. Sure. Um, but the um, the one main, the other main thing was just the idea of just throwing Superman into the Kryptonian DNA soup uh, chamber or whatever the hell you call it mm -hmm. uh, on the Kryptonian vessel that crash landed. With a mother box, thinking that that's going to revive him, it worked out. But like, let's rewind mm -hmm. real quick to Batman, yeah, Batman v, Superman. v Superman. At the very end, when you know the credits get ready to roll, and they say Superman's dead, they bury him. He's in a casket. He's underground. As soon as everybody leaves, you look at the casket, and like all the rocks, all the dirt on the casket starts to float, right, insinuating that Superman is still alive or he's coming back, right. So like, you know, he's not gone for good. Why did they have to throw him in the water and throw a mother box? I mean, he was he they should have just went with that story and like let him like get revived. Like they didn't need a a, a story around that. They didn't need right. a cuz they already just, set it up. Yeah. Yeah, he should have just shown up, but uh, but what they did was they threw that out the window. They said, "Nah. It's too missed. Maybe they maybe I don't know if this is what they thought, but I'm thinking the process is uh no, the audience is too dumb. We need to explain this to them." Mm -hmm. So we need something that explains it to the audience, but then the explanation that they give you is fucking horrendous. They throw him in this matrix and they throw a mother box in there because, quote unquote, hey, this looks unpowerful. This looks really powerful. Maybe it can revive Superman if we throw it in the matrix. Mm -hmm. And then Cyborg says, I ran the numbers. It'll work. And then everybody's like just on board with it. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it's one of those things where I'm watching the movie and it didn't really pose like a big problem to me. I, I was wondering what the numbers were, but I mean, the other thing <laughs> yeah, was... Yeah, what were the numbers that you crunched? Yeah, but I mean, the, the other thing was, I think that maybe that scene was an opportunity for Flash to kind of like have his moment. Oh, you mean you know? Cyborg? No, Flash, because Flash has to run through the ship and actually like connect at the right moment oh, yeah. to give that that power or that energy to the mother box. I mean, I think that was like Flash's moment to kind of like make him like a true like Justice League member. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there was a lot of other shit that he did over the course of the movie, but I think that that was the beginning of it all. Um, I think, um, you know, he here's my question to both of you because okay. I, I, I pose this question to you. Right. So you guys are avid comic book readers, right? Mm -hmm. You are well versed in the comic book universe and you know a lot about this stuff. My question is this. Marvel is not a st or DC is not a stupid company. They're very smart people. They have millions and billions of dollars to make these movies. They have a writing staff. I know that they have people on their staff that are, are as well versed as you guys, maybe even better. Who knows, right? Even though you guys are top notch. Oh no, like, I'm the best. <laughs> I'm just saying, comic book guy in the I'm world. I'm just saying, dude, nobody's like, better than me. No, but there, but you guys have been you and I have I have a long thing about this. I'm just saying, but like you, both of you guys have been reading comic books since you were kids. Like that is enough for you to be well versed in mm, that, right? right? But there right, are right. other people who are like. Well, let's look at page 32 and fuck, you know what I mean? Like they're well into that, like, yeah. like, like nerd on out shit, like on details. Right. Right. But what I'm saying is there are people that are on the DC staff that know as much as you guys. Why doesn't this shit actually come to fruition during the writing room? And why aren't these questions that you're posing now, like talked about? Because there's so many factors that go into it. Like if you listen to any time Kevin Smith talks about that Nicolas Cage Superman movie that never came into fruition, you get the people who are like the diehard fans who will write like the most perfect storyline with all these backed up facts from previous comic arcs and all these facts. But the real movie audience doesn't know these things. A lot of these people, they're not comic readers. They are people who are just like, oh, I like to see the dude beat up the other dudes. You know, mm. that's what they're there for. And I think, honestly, the audience is getting dumbed down and more dumbed down. And that's why you see such a huge following of Deadpool. Like people want to see humor and they want to see dumb crap. Yeah, but like, OK, all right. Point taken. But like, mm -hmm. why can't you have a movie where like the story arc is is great and it satisfies all the comic book fans. But there's also a movie that because look you have like all these characters in a movie right you're gonna have a, a story arc that satisfies those comic book mm -hmm. readers that are like okay this shit makes sense right but then you're also gonna have inevitably in that film fights that are gonna satisfy the other audience that wants to see the dude kill the other dude you I know think what I'm saying there's just so there's so many factors that go into it because you you could have a perfect script right you you get a script all the writers are like, the script's amazing. We love it. It's great. And then there's factors that pop up. You're like, you give it to the director and the director's like, whoa, we don't like this. So they change it. And then on set, they might be like, well, this didn't really work out. So they keep like, there's so many factors that go into it. So even if you do have someone who's like Kevin Smith, who's the ultra fan who writes this amazing script, it will get bastardized through all these different processes. And I'm sure that the script wasn't great to begin with. I feel like they're really getting the crap beat out of them by Marvel. Like, Marvel's doing a great job. They've planned their game. They've been like, hey, we're going to introduce this character. They do really great casting, so on and so forth. With like the Dark Knight, you had a really great, really dark Batman series. And now they're just like, oh, hey, Ben Affleck, you up for it, dude? Like, They've just been so messy with how they've plotted movies. And like some have been great and some have been so goddamn terrible that they should have been like straight to DVD. They're just so bad. And I feel like... They just are kind of like, where that money at, though? They're so, not like, what you're saying is basically you have, like, a, you could have a great script, but, like, mm -hmm. the studio and the director, like, shoot it down and go with what they want regardless. Yeah, I wouldn't say, like, shoot down the whole thing, but they'll be like, hey, this sounds great. We'll take it, and then we're just going to cut it up. Like, Yeah, just so, move. like, you got, like, a perfect script, but, like, you take, like, the parts that are going to work for, like, action and then cut out, like, the subtext, which is the most important part. 
Yeah. They'll be right. like, hey, how about we take up this part and like when Aquaman swims up, he's going to be like, so do because like kids love the memes and somebody's like, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. yeah All so right. I, I'll tell you, like I put a lot of thought into this, man, and, and I can tell you what I think is that there are two audiences that go to movies, right? Mm-hmm. There's one audience that goes to the movies to see something that has, you know, a great story, right? Some, someone who someone who goes to the movies who is a fan of the craft of storytelling, yeah. right? And that's myself. I'm into, I'm into storytelling. It doesn't matter what the medium is. If it's a comic book, great. If it's a novel, awesome. If it's a movie, great. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I want to see, read, or, or take in a fantastic story, right? And then there's, there's a, another section of the world that just wants the spectacle. They want to go to a fireworks show. You know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. have to have any kind of story or, or, or interconnective tissue at all. It just needs to entertain you and make your, your uh, synapses just fire and, and you know, you know, up your dopamine and your, your all the, like everything, just make you really happy at the end of the day because you've seen all the colors and all the, all the bright lights, right? But none of the other stuff matters. Um, it's and, true. And that's what, Warner Brothers is feasting on. Warner Brothers is feasting on the fe- on the people that that want that spectacle, right? And and the people that want story can go to hell. Uh, so so something that I can tell you just from, like looking at the two camps and comparing them, the Marvel camp and the DC camp, is like if I asked you who Peter Parker was, mm-hmm. would you be able to tell me? Spider Man. I mean, would you be able to tell me who Peter Parker was like as a person? I would, yeah. Yeah, like what is he? What does he do? What is he? High schooler, right? And yeah, what he's else? a high schooler, yeah. I mean, like he's a nerd. I mean, like what mm-hmm. else do you want me to tell you about him? Yeah, like I mean, like but if I but if you want, I mean, if, I can go into detail. Yeah, but I mean, like just but you basics. Could, yeah, yeah. Right? But Tony Stark, right? Could yeah. you tell me about him? Yeah. Could you tell me about Steve Rogers? Steve Rogers, yeah, Captain America, yeah. All right. Now, what if I said, tell me about uh, Victor Stone? Mm, Victor Stone, I I know the name, I just don't know the character. But if you give me the character, I'd be able to tell you. All right. So Victor Stone is. Cyborg. Okay. I don't know. From Justice League. So the thing about Cyborg, don't know a lot about him. Exactly. Don't. Yeah. So that's what yeah, I'm saying. That's, yeah. What about uh, Barry Allen? Nope. That's The Flash. The Flash. Don't yep. know. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't know a lot about characters. him. characters. I know, like, if you were to give me, like, the guy's actual name, mm-hmm. like, do I know who, like, who the character is, but I know a lot about his backstory? <clears throat> Not necessarily. But that, little, but that little experiment that I, that I gave you tells you why the Marvel movies are so successful. Yeah, because they've actually why, built up the characters to explain who they are. And you care about them. Exactly. You mm-hmm. care about them. And I'm not right? saying that, and I agree with you. Like, I agree Barry with Allen, you. Barry Allen, The Flash, is great comic relief. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, you don't know shit about him. His father right. was his father's in jail. That's all you fucking know, mm-hmm. right? And he has a he has like a little man cave that he hides in with his mm-hmm. favorite chair. Like that's all we know about him. Mm-hmm. Victor Stone, he walks around with a hoodie, mm-hmm. right? And he's sad. Like that's all we fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> I will say this. I mean, it's a I mean, that's a good that's a good experiment because like you're talking to somebody who is 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 somebody who goes to see the movies and takes that information for what it is where you guys are well versed in like the comic book universe you know but even if i didn't know anything about the comics even if mm-hmm. you take that out of it right mm-hmm. you don't know anything about comics but yeah. you still know peter parker you still know uh captain you still oh know, no that's not what i'm saying that's not what i'm saying i'm saying like i no, i'm agreeing with you yeah like i'm agreeing with you like that's a good experiment because like i'm i'm an example of somebody who like goes to the movies and knows that stuff based on what I've been told. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whereas like, I know the Marvel universe more because I've watched every single movie and Mm -hmm. they've explained every single character. But I mean, DC hasn't done that. It's fine that they want to do that, but they're doing it the wrong way. Right. Like I completely agree with you, but there's also the other thing where I feel like there are things that have been done in Marvel movies that like, even though I, I'll take the character for what it is. Don't necessarily make sense to me. Case in point, like Tony Stark, right? In in the first Iron Man movie, I don't know if this is in the comic book or not, but like whatever, like he gets he gets shrapnel on his chest, right? And he's got to put this like this thing in, right? That basically keeps the shrapnel from affecting his heart. 
Great, right? But you're telling me like once he leave Afghanistan and comes back to the United States, there isn't one doctor around that can actually re- take that shrapnel out of his chest so that thing doesn't have to be in the middle of his chest. That's completely bullshit to me. The guy's a billionaire. <laughs> the guy's a billionaire. Mm-hmm. He has like access to the most expensive doctors ever who know how to do that stuff, but he's going to keep this reactor in the middle of his chest to keep the shrapnel out. Give me a fucking break. Like right. anybody with that <laughs> amount of money would have had that shit on the deck the second he got back. Like that shit is un- it's not believable to me at all. Absolutely. But suspension of disbelief, I'll take that. So it's like that's something with Iron Man that never made any fucking sense to me. But because I, because right. I enjoy the movie and I have to invest in the character mm-hmm. to take it for what it is, I'll fucking swallow that. Suspension of disbelief. Cool, man. Like he couldn't find a doctor that could do that shit. Fine. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like it's small shit like that that people throw to the wind that they forget about. I'm not saying that that Marvel has massive problems with their movies because they did a great job setting it up. Mm -hmm. But to say that they don't have minor problems, like the things that Justice League may have over the course of their nine years, you're going to be a little honest with me. There are things in there that don't make sense. I can tell you for sure. that There are comic book movies that absolutely have flaws. But, But what I'm saying is like you can't like fault... Justice League for like making a couple mistakes when Marvel has done the same. But there are you things, know what I'm saying? Like there are things that know. there are things that I've 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 watched in Marvel movies that I've totally looked at and been like, dude, they could have done way better with this, right? right yeah. Um, but at the same time, like they've given you like before they started making mistakes or before they before or while they're making mistakes, they're giving you so much other rich, like story. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like it's it's obviously part of the story that he doesn't get that fixed or whatever. It's like he's he's got the thing and that's what makes him Iron Man. So you take that out and he's not Iron Man anymore. So right. so what the fuck? You don't have no more movie. So I those are things where it's like you have to compromise. Like you have to compromise. But in these situations, these aren't things that make or break the character. <laughs> Part of me thinks that like even if he had that shit removed, he would keep that shit in. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, why take that out? Like I'm I'm the man right now. Right. Like I just feel like I got this suit, like, I'm not taking this out. Yeah. Thanks for removing the shrapnel, but like my suits were going out tonight. You know what I'm saying? Like that that would still make sense to me. Right. Like there was you this know? like half ass like demon in a bottle thing with the uh, Iron Man two where they kind of touched on his alcoholism but then tried to make it like it wasn't a big deal like they they half committed to it because it was disney at the time and disney was just like oh no we don't want to have an alcoholic guy right so so it kind of (laughs) destroyed it destroyed that movie for me but at Mm -hmm. the same time i still liked the movie because the movie wasn't bad storytelling it was still good storytelling they just fucked up in a in a very big way oh yeah um Mm -hmm. but it was a bridge i never that was the that iron man 2 may be the one movie that i didn't watch several times out of the Marvel universe because they yeah, fucked I'm up. Yeah, the same way, yeah. Um, Iron Man 3 was actually a lot better, but they still fucked up by not giving us the true Mandarin. Like, Marvel is not flawless. Marvel is not, like, the gods of cinema, but they do it in such a way that you can't help but love the property and feel for the characters and actually want to see what they go through from movie to movie and then actually build to this Infinity War saga, right? And they built two Avengers. They Five fucking movies it took for them to put everybody together. And I, and I agree with that. My point is this, though. This whole conversation is I think you are right. I agree with a lot of what you said, but I also feel like I'm giving DC the benefit of the doubt because I feel like they are making a, a, a strong effort to, to become what Marvel has done. I just think that their fault is they're trying to do it too fast because they realize what Marvel has and they're trying to catch up and capitalize on that. Do I think that they should take their time? Yes, because I feel like they will get there, but it's just they're they're trying way too fast right now. They need to slow down a little bit. I'm mad because they gave us, you know, like Christopher Nolan's trilogy and then they gave us Wonder Woman. So I know they can do a great job, but they're not with films that really do matter because it's a mass of their characters. It's a huge mass of their characters they're throwing out with Justice League. Like time-honored characters and they're kind of like oh well we had wonder woman and that was like the best movie of the year so uh, don't Mm -hmm. care and that's super frustrating as a fan because i grew up loving dc that's that was my thing and now i'm leaning towards marvel with the comics Mm -hmm. with the movies because dc's just like yo we gotta put out a new comic all the time for all these different 
you know, movies we have out. And we're going to do a one-off for this and a one-off for this. Mm -hmm. And it's super upsetting because they have like Gerard Way's Young Animals right now. And that's great. All of those comics are really tight. They're taking their time with them. And DC's kind of just like, oh, a one-off. Mystic U. I don't even know what it does. I don't know. Somebody just did art we thought was cool. So there's a comic in this one, uh, Doomsday Clock. We're going to say that it wraps up uh, Watchmen. Here you go. And this and that. And there's so much that they're just like, here, you need this right now. And I mean, Marvel did that too. Yeah, when movies came out, they were like, here's this new comic line. And it wasn't the best, but they took their time even with comics they were forcing out. They were like, mm -hmm. well, here's at least a full arc. DC's kind of like, here's one off because we wanted this person to have a new outfit. Here's one off because of this. Like, it's so frustrating because you want to get involved in a storyline and you're just like, I just gave three ninety nine to a one off that doesn't even make sense. It's not tied to anything. Right. What the heck? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, and I agree with you. I mean, I think that they they're trying to do things too fast. You know, and that and that's what I was saying. Like ever since they came out with um, you know, Batman v Superman, like there was so much stuff in that movie that they were trying to throw at me that I was like, I don't even know what's going on anymore. Right. Like they had these dream sequences with like people coming out of Bruce Wayne's computer. And I'm like, what the hell is I, I was so confused, but I mean, whatever. I mean, I think we pretty much like made our points, you know what I mean? About like how we feel about Marvel and DC. I just think that they're trying to do things too fast. They just need to slow down a yeah, little bit. Essentially. You know? Exactly. I mean, I mean, all in all. So, um, but I mean, they, they, I want it to be clear that I actually love the movie. Yeah. Okay. I will watch justice league again in, in theaters. Like, they screwed up a couple of times, but like the movie itself is a step in the right direction. Yeah, I thought least. it was really, it was done well. Okay. I, at I the very it. least. Um, but to your point, like this is something that took Marvel 10 years to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these guys, I mean, you got Superman solo movie and then you had Batman v Superman. So we didn't even get a Batman solo movie. Then we get a Wonder Woman solo movie. Then we get Justice League. We don't know any of the other characters, and it's just like that's why they're failing, in my opinion. That's why they can't get. They, that's why they can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, they, they should keep have scrambling. Done. And instead of trying to keep changing and trying to just stick to your freaking guns. Yeah. Because now we had two directors on this film that had two different tones, and it felt like it. Right. You know, no, they we, should have had like a flash. Movie. Are we dark or are we humorous? Yeah, they should have had like a cyborg movie. They should have had these movies separately. Right. And then bring them together, and I think that makes sense. Good. But, I mean, uh, point taken. So. But point well received. We uh, we didn't only get the Justice League though, and I mean I, I feel like we've devoted a lot of time to that. Like what what do you guys feel about the Punisher? Well, for me, I loved the Punisher. Um, I mean, I, I say I love a lot of things, but I mean, did I have? I didn't really have many problems with the Punisher just because I. I really think that Brenthal playing it was the right choice. And I was already accepting that when I saw him in Daredevil. Your you know, boy I was thought, an animal. I thought he was great. Loved it. I think he's the perfect person to play the Punisher. Um, now, here's an interesting fact. So on Thanksgiving, I was talking to my dad. And uh, my dad and I were like, I was going through Netflix. And I'm just like, you know, going through what's out there. And I was like, yo, dad. I was like, Thanksgiving, or as I like to call it. November Fool's Day. Oh <laughs> yeah. <God. laughs> so I said, so I said to my dad, I go, Dad, I go, uh, have you ever seen The Punisher? He's like, What's that? And I was like, All right. I was like, Listen. I was like, I know you. I know what stuff you'll watch. I was like, You gotta watch The Punisher. And I talked to my mom about this a couple of days before, and she was like, Well, I don't know. You know, it seems violent. I was like, Mom. I was like, Listen. I was like, You've watched enough shit that's violent. I was like, You've watched Dexter. You've watched shit that is so much more violent than this. I was like, trust me, this is not violent. And so I said, listen, um, just watch the Punisher. And so a couple days later, my mom texts me. She goes, she goes, I said, so what's going on? Like, what are you guys up to? She goes, me and your father are binge watching the Punisher. Oh my God. And I go, are you serious? I go, that's awesome. I go, what do you like? And she goes, it's great. She goes, we love it. She goes, <laughs> she goes, great acting and i'm like yeah mom i was like it's awesome and then she goes uh 
She goes, yeah, the storyline's great. And I said, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I said, John Bernthal's great too. And then she goes, she goes, yeah. She goes, I said, what episode are you on? She goes, I'm on five. She, your dad's already on eight. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so like my mom like fell asleep one night. And my dad was like, fuck it. <laughs> it's, it's like, it just like, was like, I'm going. And so like my dad like waited for the last episode. But like my mom's like, I have to catch up. Your dad's like watching something else. But I like, so, but I had talked to them about it after and they like, they really enjoyed it. So, I mean, like, I think that's a statement in itself. Like, people who have not watched any of the Marvel movies mm -hmm. or anything on Netflix. I, like, my mom is a huge Sigourney Weaver fan because of Alien. And oh. I was like, Mom, I was like, you got to watch The Defenders. I was like, but don't watch it. I was like, <laughs> watch Jessica Jones. Watch. So, I gave yeah. her, like, all the thing, And she has, the, and she has like, them in order, too. So, she's like, her and my oh. dad are going to watch, like, all this shit. And, like, I think that's awesome, you know, because I'm, like, they're going to be watching good stuff with the exception of iron fist but i mean like they will <laughs> and and a good part of the defenders yeah most but of i will defenders. say that my dad knowing my dad will love iron fist because he's into like you know bruce lee movies and anything with martial arts he's gonna be like oh my god awesome right. so i mean and i and i enjoyed it because there of, was martial arts in iron fist yeah <laughs> if you looked closely <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe but um it was just a lot of whining but no it was um it was I mean, the fact that they're actually going to be able to, to watch these and enjoy them, I think, is a testament to people who have no knowledge about any of these characters, yeah. right? But love The Punisher, you know? And I think that's the audience that doesn't know anything about The Punisher is going to love it. And the people who are familiar with it liked it as well. So I thought he did a great job and it was violent in the perfect way. And like, you want to see the people, these people get it, the right people get it and they got it. You know, so like they did such a good job oh, of making so the bad guys just complete dicks, right? Oh, it was awesome, dude. Like, and the I, back, like you, you wanted any them. remorse for these people. Like, like you wanted them to get fucked up. Oh, and they did. <laughs> like, yeah. especially that first dude. Like that first dude. What was wrong with that first dude, man? Which one? The construction the, worker. The construction worker. Yeah. The one. Well, it's like, he was just you don't dick. want you want me for an enemy. Like, really? Like this guy is carrying a sledgehammer all fucking day swinging that shit breaking down walls all day morning until night before you came to work and after you left work this guy is still there breaking walls down with a fucking sledgehammer that he carries in his hand and he's holding it while you're talking shit to him why <laughs> yeah i don't know why you'd mess with that guy and i also but i mean you stepped on his sandwich you said nah, you're not eating your sandwich today buddy like i if i was the pot yo i would have snapped i would have just fucking wrecked that dude's head right there with that hammer. The only thing that was a little unrealistic to me is that he didn't snap earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, I did like the part, though, where, like, my favorite part of the, I think, still, the entire freaking series was the first episode where he walks up to that dude and he just goes, shut it off. I'm like, <laughs> yes! Here we go, bro! Yeah, you're like, shit's like, about so to go excited. down. Like, I was like, this is gonna happen. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, so excited. I'm like, because I hated that dude. Mm -hmm. You know? So when I saw him go down, I was just like, it was, the, it was the, a moment. I was on my lunch break and I was like, all right, let's do this. I, li <laughs> I, li I like what so he, good. I like what he was like, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna find a, I'm gonna find a place for it. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, so good. <laughs> I, uh, implying that he's gonna shove it up his ass, yeah, which I he mean, probably did. I think. I think for me, the the, the takeaway for this was, I I like it. It really is the a person that you can align with, like somebody. I think they showed us just like the internal struggle of this character mm -hmm. and what he was going through, not just the PTSD that he's dealing with, but like the society that's like pit against him and like his family's been taken from him. And they really took their time to kind of make you feel that pain that he was going through to see everything from his perspective. You know, like there were a couple episodes that friends of mine were like, oh, it was kind of boring. I'm like, well, it might have been boring because he wasn't like straight up murdering people. But at the same time, it was actually <laughs> like it was it was trying to get you to understand why he is the way he is. Like it's he's just not a guy that wants to kill people there's a reason behind it mm -hmm. and you have to understand why he's doing it and they took their time explaining that and i think that's why at the end of the day when you see the things he did and you see how he killed the people that he killed like and where his aggression comes from like it all makes sense it's not something that's unbelievable it's like okay that makes sense like i get that like he probably would go that nuts you know I and that like might work for me parts though because for a netflix show I don't want to sit down and like straight up binge watch it. I want to be able to like 
get up, get a snack, and be able to come back and nothing too crazy has happened. Yeah. And, like, there were some more boring parts because it was laying down storylines. Um, but it wasn't anything where I was like, oh, that was super boring. I'm going to shut it off. It was like, oh, I'm glad that I was able to do laundry and come back and see yeah. what was going on. Right, right. That's a good point, too. Yeah, because I did that. You know, like, there were times where I was, like, on my phone. But yeah. in the back, I was, like, invested into what was going on. Oh, yeah. You know, so... I. I just think it was seriously well done. There really wasn't anything I could point out that I would say I found like a serious negative with it. Like I really enjoyed the whole thing. I took my time with it. I watched it over like a week and a half. I didn't even binge watch it. I was like, I don't want this to end. I'm going to like wait, you know, like a day or two. till I watch another episode. I'm like one of the biggest haters on Punisher and I finished it in like five days. So yeah, exactly. It was so good, man. Like Desi was awesome, man. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, they did a good job with everybody. I was super pissed that they used Ben Barnes as the bad guy because I love Ben Barnes. And in Westworld, he was a super dick. And then in this, he was a super dick. And I was like, no. But he plays such a good bad guy. Like, you just hate this guy. You're like, I can't wait for you to get fucked up. I want him to just kill oh, you. Oh, and when he gets it. Yeah. Oh, when he gets it, when Jigsaw happens. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, it's a setup for Jigsaw. Here we go. So I hope they do a really good job with season two because you already see the setup for it. You already know what's going to happen, kind of. When he was fucking up his face, I was feeling it. Yeah. Like, I felt it. I was like, oh, my God, that hurts. Yeah. No, when he's, like, dragging it through the glass. The only thing that I didn't like about the show was just, like, the cringy military moments. Like, Cooley said that he got, you know, a little bit misty when he was talking about, like, the, why did you paint a, a Marine on the wall? And it's like, because Marines have to protect their own. Dad, when you're not here, who's going to take care of the girls? And I was like, oh, it's so cringy, that military way of thinking. But, like, as a guy, I can be like, oh, you know, I have to look over the family. But I was just like, ugh, I, I don't like that mindset. So just, like, every time I would ring up something military-wise like that, like, got to protect the girls. It's yeah. like, yeah, okay. As like someone who grew up with three sisters and a single mom, I was like, yeah, okay, buddy. I need you to protect me. Okay. <laughs> but no, he, he, I think they were very careful not to um, use gender in that conversation. Uh, I didn't, think they didn't, otherwise. They didn't, they didn't say... They were, it wasn't like a male Marine, but it was still like, I got to take care of the girls. Well, like, he didn't even say that. He just said he had to take care of the family. No, I said I got to take care of the girls. He said the family. Uh, Rewind. Uh, no, we'll come back to that next uh, episode. Yeah. <laughs> I, that I, I heard girls and I was like, Ugh. That's, I think that's just your programming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. I think you have a, I think you have a, I think you have a, I think you have a filter <laughs> that just made it, turned it into girls when it went through your head. Oh, man. Uh, well, I will say this. Punisher, I thought, killed it. Um, but something else actually came out um, on the Hulu world, which the I... The Hulus. The Hulus. <laughs> the Hulu world. I just want to... <laughs> <laughs> Alvin! Anyway, so uh, I've sadly already heard that song. Um, and I was pulling into the gym and I was like, I just want to go to the get pizza now because that song impresses me. <laughs> but, yeah. but anyway... Um, so I honestly had no intention of watching this, mm-hmm. but, uh, I, for some reason yesterday I got home from the gym and I was like, you know what? Like, what is this? And I clicked and on it. He said, you know what? Let me do my job as a podcaster and watch this show that I didn't really <laughs> want to watch, but I should for the podcast. Yeah. That's actually <laughs> kind of the thought that went through my head, but not, not about not doing my job. It was more of like, <laughs> it was more of like, you know what? I got four hours left for this chili in the crock pot. <laughs> what am I going to do? So I was like runaways. Um, rather than just run away from runaways, I sat down and watched it. Nice. nice. And um, I actually uh, stayed a while and I got about two and a half episodes in. And I got to tell you, Something that I did not think was going to be good, I'm pretty invested in now. Oh, yeah. You know, I know nothing about this. All I know is that two and a half episodes in, I want to know why the fuck there is a raptor in somebody's basement. (laughs) I don't understand (laughs) that at all. And I don't know how that's connected and why people don't know about it. Yeah. What is it eating? Like, I have, (laughs) like, I'm very confused. But, like, but, like, 
but all I know is that <laughs> what is going on with this dinosaur? Yeah. So um, <laughs> all I know is that like, um, so I was talking to Colin at work and like the only reason I had any idea was because he was like, he started watching Runaways too. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, he's like, I was watching Runaways. He's like, it's actually better than I thought. And, and I said, he goes, yeah, I, I got like three episodes in. He goes, and it's pretty good. And I said, yeah, all I know is that like last time we talked about it on the podcast, Ren was like, there's a telepathic dinosaur that's on a muzzle. And, and, and Colin goes, oh, is that what that is? So I was really confused. So, so it's like, I feel like right now I'm in the same boat as him. But right. I just have that little more knowledge where I'm like, okay, so is the girl that like gets the weird eyes somehow connected to that? I'm sure that will be explained. But like putting that aside, like the it's I the the show itself is really like interesting. Like mm. they do a good job of like keeping you invested. It's darker, a lot darker than I thought it would be. It's super dark. Like, can I be like the the most disturbing part so far was like. The girl, when they put her in that thing, and she's oh, like, yeah. I'm afraid. Like, I don't, that's fucked up. And they're like, like no, get scene, naked, and we're going to shove you in there. Dude, that scene made me so uncomfortable. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not because she was like, they were like taking her clothes off, but it's like, dude, my biggest fear is like the whole like fucking buried alive shit. And I'm like, that's exactly what was going on oh, with her yeah. right now. And that was freaking me out, dude. Yeah, and that's, I think that's the intent is to make it very uncomfortable because that's what the kids are feeling. Yeah. And they want to put you in their shoes. The whole thing is super uncomfortable because you grow up and, you know, all these people around you are dying and it's a low key for a little while. And then it's like, oh, hey, remember everything about your life? It's all a lie. Yeah. I mean, that's what's, and that, that dude, the like I still don't know how that it's all going to be explained as it would be. Yeah, like, episode she, three is where it really starts piecing together, and you're only halfway through that, so yeah. it'll start to make a little bit more sense. After all right, three. for me, like the the shit that stands out to me was the uh, was the party scene where she takes off her bracelet and then passes out, and then, that's what I was just gonna say. Oh yeah, 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 and those kids like take her to the bedroom and they're like getting ready to like you know rape her and shit. Yeah, and. Uh, like your boy comes in, Chase is just like, fuck out of here, right? And then, yeah. And he's like beating him down. And then like when when he's like, something that was funny to me though is like homeboy was just like, yo, 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 stop, 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 hold on. And then Chase was like, all right, all right. And they're like, you're dead, man, you're dead. <laughs> and they take him and they run away. Like, why? Why did they run away? Like, why didn't they just like double team him? Yeah, like, beat him up. They got him to stop. And if he's stupid enough to stop beating the shit out of somebody, then they should have just fucking turned the tide on the battle. Like, why are they going to wait until later? Oh, I didn't even think about when she passed out, her power stops. Because he never saw her. The bracelet was still off, but he never saw her, like, star gazy yeah. Right, thing. right. I didn't even think about that till just now. I was like, oh, yeah. You know what's weird, though? Like, I I think it's kind of dumb that she's like, oh, hey, like, <laughs> something. somebody posted something about the party. Like, what happened? He's like, ah, oh, some rugby shit. I'm like, yo. <laughs> Let me talk to you for a second. <laughs> like, why wait to tell her yeah. what happened? Like, I get like, cause, he, cause you don't want to be that guy that's like, LOL, I had to save you. But like, I, I think he's like, trying to like make sure that she never even had to think about that. Yeah, but no, because she should know about those guys. <laughs> like, you know, I just feel like I if think, you're ever in an environment where those two guys are around, you need to know that. You shit. still got like an episode and a half to see what happens with All that, right, but yeah. it's actually pretty. It's actually pretty interesting. Like that, I, like that is my favorite subplot in this ep in this like four episodes is like what's mm -hmm. going on with them two, mm -hmm. uh, like not necessarily like their relationship, but the circumstances that they're in with with the uh, the lacrosse team. Basically, oh, okay. it's it's interesting. I mean, I'm uh, sure that was going to be explained, but as as of now, that's yeah, my as, thoughts. As of now, that. it's sitting weird as with of, you. Yo, two epi and a half episodes in. Yeah. Episode three is the one that really hooked me, and episode four is the one that confirmed that I made the right choice. Yeah. Yeah. If they, they released three together and I was like, if they had just released the first one or two, I don't know if I would have stuck it out. Like I mm. might've, I would have been like, Oh yeah. Maybe if I remember to check when a new episode comes out, I'll, I'll see. But when they did the first three, it's enough of a binge where you can get into it. You see enough of the storyline and you're like, this is actually really yeah, I'm crazy. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, and I, I like wanted to wait up for midnight, but I'm getting old. So I passed out like 1130 on my couch and I was like, oh, I'll watch it in the morning. But like, it was, it was so good. Like, I have my pancakes. Yeah. The, 
<laughs> I'm still I'm still touch and go about some of the characters. Like I still want Gert to be like thicker and I still want, but you can't have the perfect cast. It is a Hulu show. Oh really? Like I kind of got like that vibe from her though. No? Like you you just kind of get like I actually raging just, feminist. I just remember like you saying that and that's yeah. But I got that vibe. Like, what, Yo, what's wrong is, with her, though? She's supposed to be, like, thick, though. Like, thick. She's not thick enough, and yeah. I agree with you on that. But, right. she is, but she is thick. Like, she's not... Yeah, she's she's not a twig, but I think it's really important to have someone who would be thick, especially now when, like, the average size is, like, 14. I think that representation of a thicker girl as a thicker girl myself, it's important to have that out there. And males, too. Like, I think males have worse body images than women as someone who's dated men who are like, I hate everything about me. And I'm like, whoa, me too. But I don't say it out loud like when that, you're, dude. But when you're, <laughs> casting, when you're casting for a show or for a movie or whatever, well, let's forget movies. Let's say shows, just a TV show where you have a limited budget right. and a limited time frame because the, the studio wants you to get the shit together for a certain season or whatever. Right. Um, like you have to, there are certain things that you kind of got to make sacrifices with and you got to toe the line. Like, so you have like a, you have someone who's, she's thick, right? She's not thick enough. But if we go with this other girl, she might be too thick. And then you might get this other girl who's exactly thick, but she is just not a great actress. Yeah. Right. So now you got to You got to weigh all the things that they bring to the table. Is she a good actress? Is she able to, you know, be the person that you need her to be? And then does she fit the look? And she probably fits the look just enough to, yeah. to be Gert. And, and I, I can I can forgive things like that. I, I can and I can't like I understand that now I understand it. it's a Hulu show but you've had enough months or years of like writing the script and you've had enough production to really start going like hey we should start thinking about this girl when it is in my mind she is the most important character in the show because I mean certainly there are more important characters to the development but with where she ends up in the comics and her role in the entire thing she is so important and when you are missing that you know really perfect character like chase he's so far from what i imagined i'm like whatever it's fine he's jockey whatever but like gert i just i just needed her to be as close to comic gert as possible and she's got enough of the personality but she's she's still lacking like Molly is such a weird character for me right now too with what they cast for her that was that was weird to me too it's yeah. it's so weird like she should have been a little younger yeah she's just like a weird loopy kid and you can't even excuse like oh your parents are dead you're like she's just off mm. she's just off it missed the mark with that one and i don't know i just really wanted gert to be better like I was so looking forward to her. That's what breaks my heart because I was like, yeah, thick representation because there's so many talented thick girls out there. You look at all the girls who like go for torrid modeling and you're like thick, beautiful girls who are talented. Look at, you can go on YouTube and pick out any random actress. You're like, oh, she's got some representation. And I, I don't know. Yeah, but like, why bummed. do you think, but what about her doesn't work though? She's not like big enough. Is that what you're saying? Like, yeah, like she just doesn't fit the character. Like the personality is not quite there. She's not big enough. Like you can be like thick, but Gert's really plus size, like plus size. So, okay. So you need somebody that's like visibly, I guess, bigger is what yeah, you're saying. Okay. I, the, Cause very rarely, especially in comics, it's all sexy, thin people like Black Widow. Oh, she's got to fit in a cat suit. But is this a girl that like you look at and right away you're like, OK, she's not. I don't find her attractive at all. Like, is that why? No, she's oh, posed? no. Like Gert is she's cute. Like because I thought this girl was cute, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know. Like she has a cuteness to her. So, I mean, she like does. she was she was a bigger girl, but was cute. Like, I don't know. Like there's, it worked there's for just me. a representation that's lacking. It's like I if you. you if you cast like a character who like if you cast Black Panther and he was like very, very, very light skin and he had maybe like green eyes, and you'd be like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Wait a second. Yeah. Why is Black Panther Aryan? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Oh, my God. It's I know. Just... I get it. I get it. I completely get it. I mean, I part of me see, but okay. 
Okay, I'm looking at a picture of Gert from the comics, and I can see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like she's kind of the same size. She's not, though. She's not that far <laughs> off, though. She's not but that that's far what off. I'm saying, though. But it's like maybe not, that far off. She's like a me size on, off. No. Like, I she's legit like scrolled three through, sizes off. I legit, oh, no. I legit scrolled through like about eight pages of Google images and like to find one image that made her look like she was like larger than the Gert that was on Hulu. Right. So, I mean, like, there's not, she's not that far off. Because I think the one that I found was actually only the angle that the artist chose to draw her at <laughs> that made her look bigger. Uh, like, she's really not that far off. I, I mean, the I, only thing I can tell from that picture that you showed me is she's bigger chested, to be blunt. That's the only thing I can take away from that. And okay. if you're trying to tell me that you have a problem with her not having big boobs, that's a little anti-feminism there. <laughs> no, the, I'm, like, if you look at this girl, if you look at this girl... She just wears a big jacket. She, got, she just wears a big jacket. No, honey, she gained okay. weight for the show. But it's not that much. She gained weight for the show because Did she really? that, that it's image in the that face. image is, that image you're showing me is she's mad skinny. Like that's that's her now and it's not that much. It's not that's that much. I don't know. Well, hey, you know they do have latex and stuff like that to make people look bigger, but that does not look fake in the show. I'm just saying. I don't know. Let me ask you something. If some if somebody came up to you and they were like, hey, we're going to pay you this much money, like eat this much more food, like, you, you know, would you do it? Probably. If they were like, you need to lose this much weight, we're going to pay you this well, much, would you do there it? There are actors who are like, whoa, you're going to pay me. Like it happened recently where like, I'm going to bow out because I am not the right fit for this. That's this is bad. And like, I can understand where you guys are going with this. This is just my own personal fight. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I get I get where you're but, coming from. I'm just yeah. curious. You know, I'm just curious like because because the the like what you actually had said last episode, I think, mm -hmm. about how you were concerned about her representation on the show mm -hmm. is exactly what I saw. Like like what you were afraid people would not see is um, what I saw. Like I saw okay. what you want me to see. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're seeing that. Yeah. But I think for, I'm going to speak for a lot of plus size girls. To I, totally. Yeah. I would say like, I'd be pretty bummed if I was like, yeah, I'm going to see some plus. Size. And it's a girl who wasn't plus size before. Mm -hmm. When you clearly look at photos and yeah, I see weight gain when I go through here, but I'm like, that's just a get who, a plus size girl. Yeah, just get saying. a plus size girl. All right, girl. that's fair. Just get that it. makes sense. There's okay. so many plus size girls out there. Right. You legit just paid so someone to I gain totally weight. I totally get where you're coming from now. Like, why just get yeah. somebody who's It's okay, like when cool. Jared Leto played uh, John Lennon's killer, and he's like, I had Hagen Doss pints and I melted them in the thing. And I'm like, fuck you. You know what? <laughs> fuck you. Because I have actual anxiety where I will eat myself <laughs> to the size. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Like Christian Bale eating like pies all day to become yeah. play Dick and, Cheney. <laughs> yeah, and like I have a problem too with him eating nothing all day to be the machinist because he was like a very very scary unhealthy weight. Like it goes either way, but seventeen pounds below what his <laughs> nutritionist recommended. Yeah, cool. And he's like, nope, that's what I want to do. And I'm like, that's not healthy. Side note: other unhealthy thing he did in that movie. So you know that scene where he's running through the sewer? Mm -hmm. They were like, yo, we can give you some shoes to put on over your shoes. So you're not running through literal shit and piss. And he's like, hey, you know what? Fuck that. Because that's authentic. what my character's doing. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you have any idea <laughs> how much bacteria you have on your feet right now? Yeah. Like, no, bro. Like, all set. Like, it's one thing, but like, you don't need penicillin. Like, after <laughs> you're done with this scene, it's not worth it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That's gross. But, uh, and why would you have your actor do that anyway? Like, wouldn't you just have him run through fake piss and shit um, they were like hey has we to found, be so authentic hey, yo check it out we found we could have done this the clean way yeah, but yeah. we found this other tunnel it's got real shit in it you yeah. want to run through that my <laughs> like, whole my whole you could fight. have faked that bro we would i would have believed it like huh, i don't need you to actually do it <laughs> like, okay. my whole Dude, fight is film. just they could just be like man it stinks and like we would be like no it probably stinks over there oh wow that's gross man yeah. like those kids in it i was like why are you gonna walk through shit <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, like I believe that. So, yeah. but I get you, Ryan. That makes sense. I'm just bummed about representation when there's so many plus size girls out there who would be really happy to get a foot in the door yeah. in Hollywood. Welcome or at to least, Hollywood, apparently, yeah, or at least in like Hulu. Yeah, and it's now here you go. Here's here's an average size girl yeah. who ate herself into the role to <laughs> even look remotely thick. 
<laughs> and she's here's safe. a girl who ate herself into the role, but now for some reason she's a lot more happy. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, honest with you. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> being being of a you know ethnicity that struggles with ref- representation in Hollywood, I would say, you know, I gotta, I just gotta believe you. Yeah, I just gotta believe you I'm, on that, and I'm I and I, and I got you back. I I, yo, bring on the thick chicks, bring them in. Yeah, I'm stoked you know? that you guys at least saw her as thick, but it's still sad that she's still in like the lower scale of it, and you guys are like, nope, she's she's thick, and it's like they could have got a bigger girl. And I mean, like I I wasn't saying that she was like no thick. no. I'm saying she's thick and she's thick enough. She's thick but enough, but enough to pass. And I to can get the see, point across with the character. Yeah, and yeah. I can see that there are. I can see that there are probably other reasons why they chose her. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's that's that. That's that. I think we said it. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, man. Uh, you know, we we covered everything. Kind of wanted to get into Suicide Squad this week. Uh, we never brought that up because we just had too much other good stuff to talk about with the new releases, with the Infinity War trailer and Justice League and all that good stuff. Uh, what you got to him? I was just going to say, plus uh, Suicide Squad would be a good conversation if we had Jim Rock here because I know Jim Rock is passionate about Suicide Squad <laughs> and I would love to hear his uh, his thoughts on that. So we could always wait till next week for that. Word. Cool. Word. So um, uh, make sure you guys stick around to the end of this episode because the interviews with Robert Carradine and Larry Scott are about to be played as we speak. Well, not as we speak, after we speak. After we speak, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Give it like 30 seconds, you're going to hear them. <laughs> right, because as we speak, it would suck, because then you'd be listening to us, you'd be listening to them, trying to figure it out, maybe split, stereo style. <laughs> one side's got Larry Scott, one side's got Cooley, and then Tony's talking, then Ren's talking. It's just like people are just, wondering oh, when you're going to stop talking so they can hear the interviews. <laughs> yeah, do you want to hear it? You want to hear it? All right, let's hear it. Here it is. See you next week. Later. Bye. What's up, y'all? Party, party, party. This is Lamar from Revenge of the Nerds, and you are listening to Cooley and Tony on the Red Beard Podcast. Keep your ears open. Something's coming. We briefly talked that you uh, you shot some Karate Kid. Can you just can you talk about that for a little bit? What happened? Because well, you, you talked to us about it earlier. Yeah, well, what I did was Karate Kid. I played a small role. Actually, it was supposed to be a larger role. Right. I think I shared with you guys. I think my line in the movie was, oh! <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think that was it. I was actually supposed to do more, but I... For the reshoots, when they called me back, I booked a small film called Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah. Now, of course, you know it now, but back then it was like, man, they got in my ass. They were like, Revenge of the Nerds, you're going to play gay. Remember, this is 1983, so nobody was doing that. And I said, yeah, I think I'm going to uh, I'm gonna give it a try because up to then, as a black actor, I think uh, my lines for most films were like, were this. I'm going to cut you, man. <laughs> I was like, I need to do something a little different out the box. Yeah, it was and, a bigger uh, role and you had a lot more lines, so why not take that role? Come on, actually, man. Actually, something interesting about nerds is most of the stuff in there was improv because what they had written was not a great script, I'm not going to lie. All right. But Jeff believed us and said, hey, man, literally one day he shut the set down and said, look, this is not working. We need you guys to bring what you bring to it because what we wrote just ain't working. They actually don't want to shut the film down. Wow. Because they do a thing called dailies. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah. But you get the day shooting the, the next day. Mm-hmm. You look at it, you either like it or you don't like it. It tells you where to go. And it's not digital like right now. You can do a thousand takes. It was filmed back then. You didn't even get to see it till the next day. They had to process it, send it back from Hollywood. Then you look at it. Then you make your adjustments, which in terms of DP, shout out to the DPs, they had to do all this in their brain and know and guess what it was going to look like. Right. And then see it and hope that it looked like what they thought it was going to look like. Now you look at it and you go, that's exactly what it looks like, you know, instantaneously. Um, so we worked really, really hard to make it. What we really did is we figured out at some point that if we made each other laugh, hopefully you guys would laugh. And we did. Yeah. And we did. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, Larry, thank you so much for your time, man. It's been a pleasure talking to you, man. Thank uh, you so much. Look out for Black Jesus. That's all coming right, out man. next. Next year, I'm in Black Are Jesus, you serious? too. Yep. All right, man. If you like to get your laugh on, that's, it's, it's next year coming on Adult Swim. And if you don't think about Rusty Cundiff, that's shout out to him. Did Fear of a Black Cat with him. But you know him even though you don't know him because he did all the Dave Chappelle stuff. Oh, all right, so if man. If you like Dave Chappelle, okay, yeah. you're going to love all Black right. Jesus next year. All right. Tales from the Hood. And Fear of a Black Cat, obviously. All right, all right man. All right. Good Thanks, stuff. man. Thank you so much, Thank guys. You. Look out. You can find me on Twitter and Facebook. Right. Reach out, and of course, if you ever are really worried about me, send money. 
If it's too much, Got I'll you. send some back. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, Robert. Yeah. Yeah. David Carradine was Kane. He was. Well, he was Kung Fu. He was Kung Fu. He was popular, right? Oh, yeah. Revenge of the Nerds, you were Louis Skolnick. Right. I think probably more popular than Kane, because when I mention Louis Skolnick, people know that. When I mention Kane, sometimes I got to explain. Well, it's a long time ago. But you know what's really cool, and I just realized it right now, is that David was Kung Fu, and I'm the nerd. Yeah. And yeah. it's both iconic guys. I'm glad that I'm glad that you think that was really cool, and you just found out now because that's where I was going with this. Yeah, no, because I never, I never really made that connection because Kung Fu is a big time hit, right? And Revenge of the Nerds is a big time hit, and you know, for all I know, they're still showing Kung Fu somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. so and, and one of the lines at the end of Revenge of the Nerds is that, hey, there's more of us than there are of you. Yeah. And that's and that's kind of where I was going with this is that you have like I think the the cult following on both sides is huge, but I still think there's more of us than there are of them. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, look out. <laughs> if you're anti-nerd, you're in trouble. Oh yeah, for sure, for <laughs> sure. Uh, King of the Nerds, right? Was a was a uh, it was short-lived, right? Yeah, um, three three seasons. Three seasons on yeah. Sci-Fi. Uh, no, on TBS. TBS. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about the process of coming up with that that whole thing and 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 putting that together. Well, Curtis and I had several conversations about, you know, there, there could be a reality show here. You know, we kept trying to come up with what it would be. And uh, we went to this uh, uh, producer, 5x5 Five Five Media, and their specialty is reality shows. And we met with them. And they really got into it, man. The first meeting, you know, they were already tossing it back and forth what kind of show it was going to be. And they said, it's, it's a competition. It's a competition. It's got to be. And at that first meeting, the other guy came up with the name Nerdvana for where we live. I mean, it just came together like magic. That's awesome. Um, and uh, TBS was just like some, like you, they were the ones that kind of won out in the bidding or did they? No, no, no. TBS, uh, when we came up with the concept and we uh, licensed it to 5x5, five 5x5 five, five five shopped it around. And uh, TVS made the best offer, so they got the show. Um, and one more thing, uh, after Revenge of the Nerds came out, and you guys became icons, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, how how was your uh, like? How did you how did you respond to having a fan base like that? I didn't really respond at all. I just kept on working in motion pictures, and uh, I didn't start a fan club or any of that stuff. I just you know, it never occurred to me right. to go do that. You so know? you just kept it real? Yeah, exactly. I just keep going. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Hey, man, it was a pleasure talking to you, and I appreciate you giving us your time. Okay, uh, Cooley. Good stuff, man. Thank you. Thanks.